I'm on a roll. I might as well go ahead and make the video on how I made the hog head cheese. And let me see here. I have a lot of my pickled items. And again, if, if stuff is pickled, it could last for months up to year a year or so in your refrigerator and let me share how i made my hog head nope 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 the hog head cheese right here because i searched and searched when i knew i wanted to you know do all this pickling the things in my uh the pick the pig feet the six pig feet that i bought i wanted to make pickled pig feet and also pickled I mean uh, hog head cheese so let me get a bowl and I'm gonna share how it actually comes out uh, it's already made so I'll just have to reiterate on what I did so the first thing I did was cook the pig feet you know boil them one time to get all of that the dirt off of them and then once you boil it the first time when you see all the skim you know the stuff at the top then you know pour that water out and boil them again and once they get good and tender and and where the meat is falling off the bones mine didn't quite pull off the bone but I pulled it off itself I then put it in my blender and I use I use my small part, the small top part of the blender because I didn't want to put all of it in at one time. I was really testing to see how fine or how you know the texture of it would be, how thick or fine it would be. So I I just used the small part of my blender, but you could use whatever part you know blend it. Just blend the meat. So I boiled it twice. The first time I was getting off the skim, the, the dirt, you know, the first boiling of the pig feet. And then the second time I uh, boiled it until it got tender, good and tender. I didn't want it soft, soft. I wanted it tender, not soft, soft, where it could be pulled off the bone. And once I pulled the pig meat off of the bone, I put it in my, I, I blended it. I put it in the blender. And then I, what I did once it was blended and you can make it fine or as thick, I assume as you want. I made mine kind of, uh, I had semi pieces that was still chunky. And let me wash my hands real quick so I could pour it out and show you the actual texture of the um of the hog head cheese because to my surprise I was I, it, it it's so it's perfect it is perfect okay now I'm going to since I got my hog head cheese soaking because I poured the uh, seasoning because when I made it, I only put salt in it the first time. But I, I wanted it. I was like, dog, I should have put my hot spicy so it could be spicy hog head cheese. So this morning I went on ahead and poured in the flake, my juice, my hot spicy juice. But I'm going to pour it out so you can see once I... Once I uh, blended up the hog head cheese, I, I, I stuffed it into a container and I pushed it down very tight. I pushed it down very tight. So hoping it would get into the mold of this container. Now let me pour it out because I, I cut me a slice this morning and I was so shocked at the, the firmness and everything. So, okay, I can't see what I'm showing you here. So, okay, now it's poured out of the container. Well, I'll go ahead and pick it up. But see how tight it is very tight, very tight. So what I'm going to do, whoo, what I'm going to do is cut a slice 
and um, let you see how firm. Because I mean, it, 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 I was shocked at how firm it really came out. Let me see if I could show you as I cut it. Let me rinse my hand off. And, and already what I've noticed is that the seasoning sauce that I put on it, it is, it is absorbing the, the, the redness of the heat, the spiciness I put in it. So it is uh, getting that soaking up that seasoning of my spiciness. So now I'm going to show you how it cuts. Let's see if I can get this here to where. Um, okay, that's, that's not, let me see. Okay, I wish I had another prop where I could show you, but uh, let me get my knife. Okay, maybe I could turn it up like this, but I don't want the camera to fall. But anyway, I'll cut it this way. It is very firm. When I tell you very firm, it is very firm. It's all, oh, it is very firm. And I was so shocked. So yes, what I did, so see, I have some chunks in mine. So you can make it as, when you blend it, you can make it as thin or as uh, thick as you want. And it'll start, let me rinse my hands off of here. And it'll start turning into like a like a white pasty looking. When you start blending it up, it will start turning into like a pasty. And once I blended it up, I went on ahead and packed everything real tight inside of my container. I packed it down real tight and stuck it in the refrigerator. And after overnight, when I woke up, man, I got a big hunk of whole canned cheese. And I mean, it is very firm. And again, the first time all I put in was salt seasoning. And another good thing is you're not eating the greasy fat, you know, because you left that in your water or whatever. I didn't use any water. Or any of the broth that came off the pig feet I only used the meat itself and grinded it up and it started looking whitish pasty -ish. and once I got all of my meat I had to do a little bit at a time and this is about four pig feet that's about four pig feet that was a lot that's a lot because it ha I had six and that's only four small pig feet they weren't big pig feet at all they were thin sliced pig feet so that was a lot of uh to make that 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 turned out to be a lot yes that turned out to be a lot so again i i blended it up a little bit at a time and once all of it got blended up i found me a container that i can stuff it in and make it tight and mold it and I put it in the refrigerator and uh, this morning I tested it it's maybe like going on 10 o'clock I tested it about 8 o'clock this morning and I was like Woo, it got did it but I only regret it I didn't put the red hot seasoning on it beforehand so now that's what I'm doing letting it soak up the red seasoning but yes, it is, it turned out perfect. Turned out perfect. So 
how to make hog head cheese. And then maybe on the next video, well, I might as well do it now too. As far as the pig feet, I did it the same way, but I didn't um, pull the meat off the bones, you know, after the pig feet got good and done. I went on and soaked it in my vinegar and seasoning. You could season your vinegar as you will. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, my battery low. Okay. But anyway, the, um, it cut my light off. The battery is low, so it cut my light off. I don't know how you can see me better. But anyway, um, but yes, the pig feet, I did it the same way. But instead of pulling all the meat off the bone, I soaked it in the juice. And um, so it's soaking up the vinegar now. And by it being soaked in the vinegar, to me, that's also an added addition to it being healthier than eating it without the vinegar. Because vinegar is like a antibiotic, you know, or, or it, it adds antibodies to your body. So to me, mixing and matching, eating it with vinegar, with pickles, things like that, stuff that's pickled, it adds a benefit to our nutrition. So you can research that. But um, yes, and my hot sausages, I did them the same way. I boiled my hot sausages. And once they got the, the, the wieners, weenies that I boiled, I boiled them, they started bursting, but I still put them in my vinegar. So boil your stuff first. And I haven't taken sampled the hot sausages or the hot dog, spicy pickled hot dogs yet. So I don't know what the cons consistency, because I was wondering, should I put the hot dogs and sausages in there cold, you know, right out the pack? But I say, nah, to me, it seemed like it was raw or something. So even though I, I, could, I could eat a cold, hot, hot dog and stuff, uh, not boiled. <clears throat> But I didn't want to do that. I did want to boil them. And once the hot dogs and sausages got boiled, I soaked them in some of my hot spicy vinegar as well. So you got your hot sausages, your hot pickled feet, and your hog head cheese. Try it. Save some money and let it last a lot longer. <laughs> Have a blessed day.